Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. So finally, you decided to learn Kubernetes. You want to get all the certifications, want to dive deep and be the guru. So you gathered a bunch of documentation, started studying, and now you want to try this out in a hands-on Kubernetes cluster. But then you run into this problem. What is the easiest way to create a Kubernetes cluster for learning. So in this video, I'm going to go over pros and cons of different Kubernetes clusters for learning Kubernetes. I'm also gonna give short demos and I will share what do I personally use for learning Kubernetes. Note that this is only for learning Kubernetes for certifications and getting your hands-on purposes. This is not for running your actual production projects. All right, with that, let's get started. So we will divide this into these few categories. Whether the cluster is free or you get charged or billed, whether the cluster is temporary or is it permanent, how much time does it take for you to spin up the cluster? And any other additional comments. All right, so first let's look at the cloud options. So I tested this in AWS and uh, GCP. So both of them have a free tier, but after that it is billed. And I don't want you guys and girls to keep this like, okay, I am, am I in free tier? Am I getting billed now? Did I go over my trial period, etc.? cetera? Uh, so for this, I put it as build. The cluster will be permanent, so it will be up and running until you delete it. Cluster spin up time is around uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and comments is, it's good for cloud specific learning. So uh, if you want to test out how CloudFormation creates EKS cluster, or how EKS cluster can read and write from Elastic File System, how a pod security group works, etc. then this option is good. And then to spin up a EKS cluster, I can run EKS CTL, create cluster, and that will go create an EKS cluster in my AWS account. So I have a full separate video on this EKS CTL. I'm gonna give a link up top. But I do not use uh, EKS cluster for learning and my certification prep. Uh, so with that, let's go to the next option. So the next option is Katacoda. Uh, this is a browser-based learning environment. So you go to a browser and then you provision a Kubernetes environment and then you can uh, run some uh, commands in it. This is uh, free for now, so I'll come to this uh, section a little bit. Uh, the cluster is uh, temporary, so it is deleted uh, after you run certain commands, and generally it stays between 10 minutes to 59 minutes. Cluster spin up time, extremely fast. Uh, it spins up in less than a minute. Uh, so before I jump into the comments, uh, let me show you guys and girls how to do this one. So you can go to Google and search Katacoda and click the first link, Katacoda Interactive Learning Platform for Software Engineers. So recently O'Reilly bought this Katacoda software. However, the things are still free. You don't need to pay anything to use this. But I don't know if this will change uh, down the line. So this is good for like scenario-based learning. Uh, so you can see there are multiple uh, scenarios like Kubernetes introduction has 17 scenarios, extending Kubernetes has eight scenarios, and these are all free. Uh, so if I click this uh, Kubernetes introduction, you can see there are multiple uh, scenarios like launch a single node cluster, uh, deploy containers using kubectl, etc. Uh, so let's say for our case, we want to launch a single node cluster. So to do this, you click this uh, start scenario, then click start scenario, uh, and then it asks you to run this couple commands, minikube version, and then this one, and this is what uh, provisioning the Kubernetes cluster for you. All right, so Kubernetes cluster is up and running. 
And then if you are following this uh, scenario, it's gonna ask you to uh, run the commands that you need to do to learn this. So you can see the kubectl commands are running. So that means the Kubernetes cluster is up and running. And then it's gonna teach you uh, what you need to follow to deploy containers, etc. Uh, so you can, you can either type it or click these commands uh, and then it's gonna keep doing this. And once it is done, uh, let's say I run these commands and that's the end of this scenario. Click continue and uh, that's it. Uh, your cluster is kind of gone because the scenario is done. If you want, you can do like, you can write your own manifest file and run it. Uh, but since it's browser based, it is gonna kick you out uh, after a certain time. So the comments for this is, uh, this is good for uh, browsing from anywhere, doing it from anywhere using a browser. No installation required in your machine or no configuration required. Uh, good for scenario. Uh, however, if you have a lot of manifest files when you are learning, you, you did a bunch of uh, Kubernetes YAML files and you want to run those, then this is not good, right? Because since it's a browser based, you cannot really copy paste or move your files from your local computer to this catacoda easily and test it out. So which brings me to my favorite, and this is, this is what I use to learn and test stuff, is a Minikube. Uh, so Minikube is a software which allows you to create Kubernetes cluster in your local machine. So this is free because it runs in your local machine. It keeps on running until you delete the cluster or you shut down your machine. And it also spins the cluster in less than a minute. So actually this Catacoda uses Minikube behind the scenes. Uh, so O'Reilly has a bunch of servers running and they, when you say provision cluster, it actually runs a mini cube. So let's check it out and then we're gonna uh, do the conclusion. Super easy to install mini cube. You can just search mini cube in Google and then click the first link and then it shows you how to install it. Uh, so I like to show it in Windows because generally Windows give the most trouble. Uh, Linux, if you have Linux or Mac OS, uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, however, I do have to say Minikube, super easy to install. I have chocolate installed, so I just ran this command. I run this command in my Visual Studio Code terminal or you can run in any terminal. And then it installed pretty quickly actually, within, within a minute or two. Uh, and then to spin up a cluster, all you need to do is Minikube space start and it will spin up your cluster. Your cluster is up and running, so it's pretty quick as well. And then if I run kubectl, I'll get all. So you can see now it's pointing to that Minikube cluster. Okay, so going back to the comparison. So one thing that I really like about Minikube is I can reuse all my local manifest files easily. So as I keep learning Kubernetes, I create like manifest file, ingress, configuration files, etc., and I have them all in my uh, local machine, right, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, in my Minikube cluster, since it's running in my local machine from the same uh, Visual Studio Code, I can run them super easy. I can just do kubectl apply and they get installed. So summarizing, so Minikube is what I personally use uh, to, uh, to test, learn Kubernetes, unless I have to test with cloud scenarios, then I use my EKS commands. That's the video guys and girls. Also, uh, let me know if I missed any tool that you use uh, that is easier than what I shared for learning. Uh, and please do all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, comment. It really helps the channel grow. We are very close to 10,000 magical subscriber milestone. So let's get to that. Uh, all right, with that, uh, that's it. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.